Okay, so now we're going to talk about a very esoteric concept, something that frankly just does not occur to most people who don't make measurements for a living. Okay, but we're this is a science class, and you're taking this class because you have in mind some um, avenue of um, measurement in your future. And it may not even feel like that, right? You may think that you're going to be treating patients or, 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 or solving crimes or something like that, right? But it turns out this is going to be central and it's difficult concept because frankly, it's not in the uh, center of what most people are thinking. So let's talk about it. Counting is the only kind of measurement that is free from uncertainty. Man, I remember recently when I was 18, 19 years old, which is 30 years ago, but feels so recent thinking, if I'm going to have some ex some number, let's say 4.01368, I'm going to go, oh yeah, I'm going to keep all those digits because I'm going to do it exactly, right? But this is not exact. Counting is the only type of measurement that is free from uncertainty. It's the only thing where you can have an exact number, okay? So one foot is exactly 12 inches because it's defined by inches, right? One inch is exactly, this is pretty subtle, one inch is exactly 2.54 centimeters. That's subtle, okay? I'm not going to try to explain that too much right now because, frankly, it takes a little faith. That's the definition, okay? One gram, though, is exactly 0 0.001 kilograms, right? Because 1,000 grams is equal to one kilogram by definition, right? So that's just counting. That's where we get exact numbers. Now, everything else is vulnerable to um, uncertainty, right? All other numbers that are given by rulers, calipers, uh, balances, thermometers, these numbers are not exact, okay? And there are practical limitations on measurement processes used, and so it's okay that they're not exact, but we have to communicate how much we know about them, right? We have to communicate our uncertainty. Now we're gonna do that with, uh, oh, here's, a, here's an example. So look, we take a graduated cylinder, right? And we've got this meniscus, which comes down like that. What is that? What's the volume here, right? And you may be tempted to say that the volume of this stuff is right here. Or you may be tempted to say it's, Maybe you're halfway between, right? Well, it turns out, by definition now, by the way these numbers are printed on here when graduated cylinders are made, we've agreed that the meniscus, that part right there, is going to be where we make our measurement, okay? So it turns out this number is between 21 and 22. It's probably, oh, I don't know, 21.6 milliliters, okay? I'm going to say 0.6. We know from a, 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 a future slide that, oh, I said 21.6, right? But if you said 21.5 or someone else said 21.7, that would be totally fine because you are allowed to estimate one digit, right? It's expected that you'll estimate one digit. Now, all of the digits in the measurement, including the uncertain last digit, are called significant figures or significant digits. We oftentimes shorten this by saying sig figs uh, because sig digs just doesn't sound very good, right? So sig figs or significant figures or digits include all of them, including the uncertain last one, right? So there are three sig figs in this number. There are two that were explicit and one that was estimated, all right? So let's move on now. These numbers are always, here are some sig numbers that are always significant. Anything that's not zero is always significant. Any zeros that are in between and any zeros that are after, okay? When they are to the right of the decimal place and when they're in scientific notation, okay? So these numbers are not always significant, or these numbers are always, I'm sorry, always not significant, leading zeros, that's zeros before a number, zero, zero, four, four, right? These are insignificant. And trailing zeros when they're to the left of the decimal place. 
unless there's a decimal place, right? So there's a little, little trick right there. Okay, so here's some examples. We have some great uh, practice that we'll be doing throughout the semester, so this is not something you're expected to be good at by the end of this lecture. This is just an explanation. Okay, there's a captive zero. Where's my pen? There is a captive zero because it's between non-zeros, right? And here's a trailing zero to the left of the decimal point. Okay? Now, here are leading zeros. And here's a trailing, which is to the left. So there are four sig figs here because that's captive, right? So these are non-zero, so they're definitely significant. Um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay? So... Results calculated for measured numbers are at least uncertain as the measurement itself. When you add or subtract numbers, you need to round the, the result to the same number of the decimal place uh, with the least number of decimal places. Okay, when we multiply or divide, we round to the same number of digits with the least number of sig digs. Okay, and if you drop a digit, then if it's less than five, we round down. If it's greater than five, we round up. All right, so we've lots of practice coming up on this, all right? This is just an introduction. So let's look at this. I'm gonna scratch my eye for a second. Folks, give me a second. I don't wanna edit, edit this video, so I'm just gonna keep talking while I'm rubbing my eye. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, it feels good. Okay, good. Now, <laughs> I know somebody's gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna get a dig for that. All right, so let's look. The following examples illustrate the application. All right, so if we're going to suppose that we had to do this to three, rounding few different numbers to three sig digs, okay? So if we're going to three sig digs, then I'm going to go watch this. One, two, three. Okay, so I'm supposed to do that, but I got to round because this number, is this seven is bigger, right? So this is going to go to 0.287. Now, this, I'm, I need three sig digs. So those are my three right there, okay? Now that is smaller than five, so I'm gonna round down, it goes to 18.3. Uh, here's my three sig digs. That is gonna round up because five is greater, is five or higher, right? So this is gonna go to 6.88, okay? And then finally, here's my three sig digs. That's going to also round up because 5 is greater than or equal to 5, right? So it's going to go to 92 point. Wait. The dropped digit is 5 and the retained digit is even. Oh, that's, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't read that, that, that correctly, but I'm always going to round up when it goes to, to the 5. When a 5 here, you always round up, even though that's not what the rule was in the previous slide. You better watch out for that, right? If you're still watching the video at this point, put a star next to it unless you get what I'm doing here. I'm being inconsistent with, uh, with, with the author of this text. Okay? All right, so now we need to introduce a couple terms, accuracy and precision. Measurements are said to be precise if they yield very similar results when repeated in the same manner, right? So if you take a measurement over and over again and you get very similar results, then your measurement is precise. Now... If you happen to know what the true result is, what the true value is, and you're close to that, it's said to be accurate. So here's an example of precision, right? You're, you're constantly, if you're shooting this, if you're shooting a nine millimeter at a target and you're constantly getting over here, you have a precise nine millimeter, nine millimeter, I'm, yeah, you have a precise nine millimeter and you've got a precise hand and a precise trigger finger, but you're your, uh, but the gun itself is actually going off somehow a little bit, right? So you got to adjust the sighting on this. The sights are probably off. Okay? So over here, your stuff is all over the place. So this is neither, neither precise nor accurate. But here, this is both accurate and precise. Because you know you've got your, 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 um, your um, bullseye right there, and you're close to that. That's the, accurate, that's the known value. So let's last one last slide here. The, the volume of cough medicine delivered by 10 ounce dispensers. Can you, I, I really should have had deleted that before we looked at this, right? Look at this. Can you see these are all pretty close to, well, these are actually wandering out a good bit. Look at the, if it's a 296 dispenser, 296 mil dispenser, then look at this. 
These are not 296, right? But they're all pretty close to each other. So yeah, I'd say this is precise, but not accurate, right? Because it's not 296. These are pretty close to 296, right? But they're not close to each other. So this is not precise, but it is accurate. And these, wow, look at these, are all right on top of 296 and very close to each other. So this is precise and accurate. All right, can you see what's going on here? All right, so accuracy, accuracy and precision and sig digs are what we covered in this section. And we are going to practice it and practice it and practice it. It'll get easy. Good luck.